What's going on guys? I'm Renegade. Welcome back to my channel. If you're not already subscribed, hi. Now for those of you who do not know, this is my 1993 Yamaha XJ600, which if you've been following my channel, if you're subscribed, you already know. I built this. Well, I rebuilt it. But it's a custom build, so I built it. When I got this bike, it was not in a running condition. I had to get it back up and running and in the process I did a little bit of carb tuning but I still have an issue that's been driving me nuts for the last year why am I taking care of it in the last year well it's tedious and it's a pain in the ass my problem has been that I can't hit wide open throttle uh, the bike runs great from idle just getting on the throttle all the way up to about three quarters of a turn of the throttle and she goes flat and dead what do I mean by that well check this out and you'll understand watch what happens with, as I get farther back on the throttle you'll see there's a point when I'm throttling up when I start to die off and when I let up I'm gonna start shooting forward ready dead shooting forward and I was rolling off the throttle. This is a problem. I need to fix this. Now, if you are subscribed, you also know it's a little weird for me to be in this garage. And it's very cramped, so I'm going to apologize now if I'm kind of squeezing around and etc. And maybe some odd camera angles to see what's going on. Anywho. Carb tuning. It's a pain. It's tedious but it's not that hard. Now, please keep in mind when I say this, I'm not a professional mechanic. There might be professionals that know how to do this a lot better. I'm not one, sorry. But I know the basics of carb tuning. Now there's a bunch of different pieces in a carburetor, but there are three main things you need to consider when you're talking about carb tuning. One is your pilot jet. One is your needle, and one is the main jet. Now it gets a little complicated as to how each one runs and everything like that, but here's the basic thing you need to know. Your pilot jet controls your fuel flow from idle to maybe about a third, maybe even as high as half, roughly. Your needle takes over from there. There's a bit of an overlap. Now we're talking, it doesn't just do it but it is the main component that gives your carburetor the performance or the functionality uh, your needle controls from about a third to about three quarters and then your main jet is the primary for three quarters to full throttle now again there is little bits and whatnot here and there are things that get more complicated but this is the basics okay now your jets are just little screws with little holes in them that allow fuel to flow through it's really simple that far you know the bigger the hole the more fuel can go through it the bigger the jet and they're sold in sizes ranging all the way up and done in 2.5 increments. This is where it starts to get tedious because as far as I am aware, the only way to test this all is by the plug and test method. Meaning, take out what you have, put in something new, run it, see if it makes a difference. If it does, great. If not, go back. As you can imagine, it's a lot of trial and error. That's what makes it a pain in the butt. Now I'm sure some professionals or even some really savvy people out there might have a formula that you can run to tell you exactly what, I don't have that, okay? I'm old school, I'm a junkyard dog. This is how we do it. This is the best way that I know how. So now one of the important things to know is that 
as you're going uh, through the, the range of the throttle turn, your bike can have different sounds and that will help you diagnose what's going on if you don't think your carburetor is running at peak performance. Uh, since I'm talking about the main jet, let's focus on that right now. Okay, I get to three quarters of a turn and go a little farther and you can hear the bike die off. You can hear it go flat and there's no power. This tells me that the main jet is running rich. If it wasn't, it would continue to run until it just ran out of power and wouldn't give me any more. But that dead flat sound that it has is what gives me notice that something's wrong. Now, the flip side of that is if it started getting tinny when you got high up in the revs and high in the turn of the throttle, then you would know it was running lean. All right. If I'm confusing you with the terminology, I apologize. Lean, too much air, rich, too much fuel. It sounds strange to some people I know because you'd think the more fuel the better it runs. No, it's all about proportions. If you have too much fuel, you're not going to run right. Too much air, not going to run right. Got to find that happy mid-ground. And obviously you can boost it a little towards the, the richer side, but if you go too far then you start getting dead spots. So what I did was I hopped on the old interwebs and I bought myself some new jets. And what you need to do if you're going to be doing it as carb tuning is to know the make and the model of your carburetor and what's in there. Now, if it's still stock, you can just look up the stock specs and find out what it is. Now, I have Makuni uh, carburetors on this bike. I have four carburetors. Each one runs one cylinder, which means I'll need four jets. Luckily, they're sold in packs of four. Look at these guys. Look at how small they are. I mean, that's tiny. I mean, look at that. That's all it is. These little screws. Go figure. But I looked it up, and I know that I'm running a 102.5 in the bike stock. If I want to jump up a step going rich, because it's sold in 2.5 increments, that would mean that I have to go to a 105. If I'm going down because it's running too rich, I'm going to go to a 100, down 2.1. It's pretty simple. Now, the proper method of doing this would be I'd plug these in, run it, see if it gives me a, a good effect. If you were going rich, things get a little different and a little bit easier, actually, because you'd run the richer, the bigger jets, and see if it makes a difference. If it does, you move up another step. And you keep doing this until the bike starts to taper off and you start to get the dead spots and the lack of performance. Then you would go back a step to where it was running fine. That's how you tune the carburetor. There are other little things, obviously your air fuel screw and mixture and your idle set and all that stuff, but we're just talking about jets and how to make them run properly. Pilot jets are a little bit easier. That has to do with the air to fuel ratio down in the idle, and a lot of it has to do with your climate, how much air is in, or how much oxygen is in the air, how thick your air is because of your uh, elevation. Somebody who's running a bike in Colorado where they're a mile up in the air, you're going to run a bigger pilot jet than somebody like me who lives at sea level because the air is thinner in Colorado high up than it is down here at sea level. It's simple, but it's tricky. That makes sense. Yeah. So I've got these and what I did was I went down one size. Which one is it? I went down one size. This is a 100. And just to be on the safe side, I did get one up a size to a 105. Just in case for whatever reason I'm wrong and I'm actually running lean. First step is I gotta get the tank off and get to the carburetors. I'm gonna do this the easy way rather than the hard way because I don't feel like taking the bike all the way apart. I'm lazy. By the way, 
If you look at how crowded this garage is, got a shop press right here. Great place to put my coffee cup. Got a big refrigerator right here, which is just taking up all that space. Look at this. That's why I don't work in the garage much. Not much space. Half the garage, covered in crap. But it's dark. I want good lighting. And I don't feel like getting eaten by bugs. So I'm going to work in the garage. By the way, if you're going to be doing this type of work, and you're like me and you smoke, now's a good time to have your last cigarette. Because in a couple minutes, I'm taking that off. And yeah, I'm not a... Uh, I'm not risking having a lit cigarette with the open fuel line. Yeah, I'm not an idiot. All right, so I put the gas tank outside for safekeeping and obviously there's not a whole lot of room for me to put it. I don't wanna run the risk of stepping on it. So here's the easy way to do this. Right here are our carburetors. All right, one for each cylinder. And I just need to get this off. Just need to get the bowl off, the bottom of the carbs. That's where all of our jets are stored. Once I get the bowl off, I can get to the jet easily, take it out, put the new one in, carry on. So how about I shine some light on the situation and get to work. Look at this. I'm so old school, I don't even have one of those fancy LED things. I've just got one of these bare bulb things. Before I go too far, I should note that if your bike has been running, there's gas in these. So there's a little drain screw, a little nipple right here. Put a hose on that and you loosen that screw and it'll drain. I ran the bike with the fuel line off for a while, so there should be very minimal gas in here. But that's why I've got a rag too, because I'm just gonna catch the gas. See, barely any gasoline. All right, so when you look in here, it looks a little complicated, I'm sure. This is your float. It stops your needle in here, your float needle, to close off so you don't flood your carburetors and then your cylinders. You've got this guy here. That is your main, or this is your pilot jet. And you got this guy right here. All this right here, yep. That's your main jet. That's the little bugger we're dealing with today. Luckily these guys come off with just a flathead. So I already took off that one. Here's the new one. And just like that, I got one done. Now the other ones are gonna be just as easy. So I'm just gonna blast through these real fast and not stop to talk about it. If you're like me, at about this point, you're thinking to yourself, God, I hope this works. Otherwise, I gotta redo all of this. Now, of course, if you're tuning and you're going richer, you will have to redo all of it because you want to find the point where you can no longer run any richer. You got to jump back a step. Yeah, this stuff sucks. It's a pain. It is what it is. All right, well, the carbs are back together. I got to put the tank back on and then we can test it. But one thing you need to remember when you're doing any of this work Always make sure you're very careful not to lose the jets. I put them in a catch tray, and now that I'm done, I put them in this Ziploc bag, labeled with the bike and the size of the jets. 
I'm gonna go in my storage shed. I'll have them if ever I need them. I'm hoping this works and I won't need them. Always better to be safe than sorry. So always keep your stuff and label it so you know what it is. Now let me get the tank back on and we'll see what's going on. All right, everything's back together. So now I gotta start it up and test it. Maybe I shouldn't do it in the garage though. It's running and it's not leaking because you always gotta check and make sure you're not dripping fuel on the ground. I'm gonna spill a little bit. Yeah. There's one more test we gotta do. Let me go get the helmet. Alrighty, so let's see how this goes, huh? Thinking about it, I probably should have grabbed a sweatshirt. This is gonna be cold. It certainly feels good and snappy. We're gonna have to see if uh, see how she handles up in those upper RPMs, the farther open throttle position. is much better. Now, if I did this correctly, not only will the bike run better and not have that dead zone, but because I'll be able to use more of my range, I should also be able to go faster. Guys, and that feels so much better, it's not even funny. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we've achieved wide open throttle. Oh, good God. I didn't rush it, but I did get up there. Now I know we're definitely going to have to test just how fast this bike will go. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching. My name is Renegade. As always, feel free to subscribe. Hit the notification bell so that you get notified every time I upload a video. And follow me on social media, Instagram and Twitter. Links will always be in the description below as well as the playlist of the bike that I am working on. That's going to do it for me. Y'all have a good day. Keep rocking and rolling. And uh, I'm going to keep taking care of business. See ya.